Welcome everyone to a video demonstrating my Drawbot. It is a 3D printed holder for felt pens that I designed and this one gets mounted to the Onefinity CNC uh, but you could probably adapt it for any CNC. It's comprised of a few 3D printed parts, um, some hardware, there's a little mechanism here that uh, allows it to move up and down and I have a Sharpie mounted in there right now. So I'm just going to do a little demo on how it does its drawing and then um, if you are interested in um, building one of these just stick around later and I'll show you how I made it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the pen down so it's almost touching this cardstock here. And up a little bit and uh, I will zero all of my origin there and it is ready to go so all you have to do is pull out your cardstock and start up the program so So if you're interested in building one of these, uh, I have the SDL files online for you. And if you want to know how I just made up my G code for this drawing, stick around. Otherwise, thanks for watching. So this Sharpie in here is a fine point uh, jumbo. And if you wanted a different color, all you have to do is pop this off. It's all magnetically attached. This is one is a uh, ultra fine and it just snaps in and you're good to go for a different color or a different type of sharpie. I'll just show you how I've got um, the poster paper um, down onto my spoil board. So I just bought some hard hardboard, quarter inch hardboard, um, and I made for my spoil board a covering. And it's just got four corners on it that's um, nailed down, glued and nailed down. And that way, whenever I want to draw something, it just fits right over top of my spoil board. And then I have a place for some bull nose clips to hold down the paper. Okay, let's look at uh, Carbide Create. So this is... Um the software that I used for Yoda, but you can use any software uh, you wish. It's just some simple G code you have to upload. Uh, as for the image, I just got that off the internet. It's, it was a PNG and I converted it to an SVG using uh, Inkscape, but you can use some free online software 
um, but we won't really get into that right now, but just make sure it's a SVG and you imported it into Carbide Create through the import button there. Uh, then I made a stock, so let's just take a look at that. My stock is 770 by 700. That's just this white box and that's in millimeters. Um, and uh, my thickness, well, it's just a piece of paper, but I said it's 10 millimeters thick and my zero height is top. And my uh, CNC, I'd like it to start at the lower left-hand corner. And my retract height, I made it around eight, mil eight millimeters. I could have probably done five or so um, millimeters. So uh, that's basically how I set up the job. And next, um, let's take a look at the tool path. So go to here. So what I did is I, I want it to just draw on the lines. So I picked a, a contour tool path, and that's what this is here. But you could make up a tool path that is a pocket and it would fill in different areas. You could make a separate tool path that's a different color so it would stop and then you could start with a different color for the rest of the drawing. So there's lots of um, variety you can use in here. So let's just look at the contour tool, tool path. Um, it is um, an end mill that I just chose. I chose a 1 16th inch end mill because it's not really an end mill. It's a felt tip marker, but the 1 16th was about the thickness of the marker. So I just chose that. And um, I changed the depth per pass because I don't want multiple depths. I just wanted it eight millimeters um, down, or I could have said maybe five millimeters down, and it would just do everything in one pass. But I did change the feed rate. An end mill like that probably wouldn't, you wouldn't want it to go 6,000, but I changed it from a about a thousand to six thousand. I could have made it maybe eight thousand to go a little bit faster, but those are the two things I changed: my depth per pass and my feed rate. All right, so uh, that's basically all I needed to do there. I said my maximum depth is around five millimeters. I could have made that eight millimeters. It probably still would have worked fine. And then for my offset, I wanted to draw exactly on the line, so I said no offset. And that's basically what I did to get my um, G code and it said six millimeters here but it ended up being around 13 sorry six minutes but it ended up being 13 minutes and uh, then I just saved that out and put it on the CNC and um, made sure my felt tip marker was close to the maybe a couple millimeters away from the top of the paper uh, zeroed it all out and then started it okay welcome to the assembly section of my video uh, this is my Drawbot 3D printed drawing tool for the Onefinity CNC. And um, when I printed this, I printed it flat like that. There's four holes, one, two, three, four, that you just have to be concerned about when you're printing. So make sure you print it with supports. Uh, once it's done, if um, the metal rods that are supposed to go through here don't quite fit, you can um, open them up, sand them, or file them just a little bit, but be careful not to open them up too much, otherwise you're going to get some slop in the mechanism. Uh, there are four holes that you're going to attach your CNC, uh, attaches to your CNC with uh, using some bolts. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is the, that's the frame. This is the carriage. The carriage has four holes here for some magnets, and then it's got two holes in here for some bushings, and a hole at the top for this little eyelet. And when I printed this, I printed it in this orientation. Um, so print it with supports to fill this gap in here, as well as um, the holes for the magnets. And then the other parts that you're gonna need to print are two of these, these are caps. They have some number four by three eighths inch um, wood screws in there uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. And then the last thing are going to be multiple ones of these, or you can just use one if you want. Um, this is a 3D printed pen holder, and you just print it flat like that. I printed everything with um, four or five parameters just to make it strong. Uh, I didn't want any flex in this mechanism, so um, that's how I did that. So let's talk about the frame first of all. Um, one of the caps that I have here, uh, they, it is mounted at the bottom with four screws just to cover the holes in the bottom. Um, probably didn't need to have this part here, could have had it all solid, but I uh, wanted to have the ability to take that off if I had to. And then these are just picture eyelets. I just screwed them in. It doesn't really matter about how long they are, as long as they can go into here um, deep enough, 
for the five mils, uh, that'll be good. And then you're gonna wanna pick out a spring. Uh, there's the spring that I have hanging down right there. You can attach it now or later. Um, this can expand, um, the strength of it is, it's not too strong. You don't want anything too strong, so you might have to play around with some springs. I just had this in my junk drawer and just looped it around uh, this eyelet here. We'll talk more about the tension of that and how it relates to everything in just a minute. Um, this is the carriage, and it actually has um, holes for some neodymium magnets. These are the magnets that I use. They're uh, rare earth magnets, and they are um, eight millimeters across and three millimeters deep each. And then you just press fit them in. Okay, so it's nice and flush. And it doesn't matter what what direction you put them in for now because we're going to match them up a little bit later. Um, these are bushings for some metal rails to go through. And um, I'll show you how I made those. And then I put in an eyelet uh, at the top there. Best way to do that is to just stick some needle nose pliers in uh, and turn it like that until it is almost flush with the very top. Okay. Now these bushings are made from these um, pulleys for 3D printing and whatnot. And I just took the grub screws out of there because I don't need them. And they fit perfectly inside this mechanism. So you want to take this top cap off. Best way to do that is just stick this in a vise, hold on to this and bend it and it'll pop the cap off uh, and then you're left with uh, this uh, bushing that will fit perfectly inside of here. So you just stick this in there, push it down uh, until it's seated uh, through these holes um, to the bottom of this little platform here. Um, if you need to, you can use some, want some of these pliers and just push them down. You don't want to have too much play in here, so you don't want to sand too much, just just enough for their, for them to fit snugly in. All right. Okay, so um, what goes through here are these metal rods. They're five millimeters each. You can buy these uh, online. I just cut them to be 75 milliliters long, and they go through here and uh, allows the mechanism to move up and down. Okay, so let's just put this together and I'll show you how it works. So um, you can take the spring off if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it in there. And the spring is going to go through uh, this hole right at the bottom here. So we just tuck it in like that. And you can see the spring is uh, in the back there. And before we play around with the spring, let's put these rails through. So they go in from the top and into the bottom hole and it should sit flush on top okay not sticking out at all um, and then same thing with this one through there and then into the bottom boom okay now uh, before we go any further let's put the top cap on and that's put on by these four screws Probably overkill to have four screws here, but I put um, two on each side of each rail there. All right. Okay, now before we start playing around with this, let's turn it around and we will hook up our spring. Turn the spring so we can see it. Stick that on there. So now you can see that the mechanism moves up and down in there. It's got a lot of movement. It's got like almost an inch of movement there, which you probably don't need. You probably only need about a 16th of an inch or so, but there's uh, a lots of play there in case uh, you need to um, move your, your spindle or your router up and mount up and down. All right, so once that's all together, um, we are gonna talk about these pen holders. So I just 3D printed these and they have matching uh, magnets on them. So you just press the fit the magnets onto the back. Uh, make sure that before you put these magnets in though, that that one matches up with this magnet here so that they're both attracted to each other and um, so on and so on all the way around. And this um, pen holder is made for this Sharpie, this size Sharpie here. This is a fine point large. It just gets pushed in uh, like that till it hits the top. And then it is like um, 
using the force in Star Wars. It just magnetically uh, attaches there and sticks on really well. And then the whole thing can move up and down. And you can print off another one of these if you want a different color or you can pop the pen out, doesn't matter. I made this one here for the Sharpie Ultra Fine um, and it's a little bit smaller pen. It just snaps in like that too. This whole unit is mounted to your CNC with these number five by 10 millimeter um, bolts right there. And they just go into, they go into the top like that and get screwed onto the mount on the front of the CNC. And if you don't have a Onefinity CNC, you could probably still use this whole thing. Uh, you just need to make yourself a little mount that attaches to here onto your, onto your CNC. So that is the assembly guide for my drawbox.